You know, these practices are needs a lot of uh, deeper understanding. So today we are uh, moving to the sixth step of the first verse. And if I translate that into a step, so we recognize the inherent defects of pleasure-seeking mind. So when you recognize and understand the inherent defects of the pleasure-seeking mind, the mind becomes so free. You take the world lightly. It doesn't mean you don't do the work, you know, you stop doing the work. You take the world lightly means mind is very clear. That is where the Lara started uh, talking. So what are these eight steps, the goal? 20% the mind is engaged in Shreyas. The mind always moves to what is right and what is good. What is right and good is a common element for everyone. One is egoistic, serve their ego, don't be egoistic. <laughs> what is right and good for me? Right and good for me, boss is there, boss will lay me off, he is right and wrong, forget about it. Am I right and wrong? Follow right. Simple. That is what the Lara. So 20% of the mind should be engaged until the mind becomes clear what is right and good. 20% of the mind, now 80% is left. So 20% of the mind should be engaged with a focus in professional life, in social life, and family life. Now I'm just explaining what are these eight steps guiding you, guiding all of us. So 20%. Individual, I set myself right internally. 20%, I express professionally at the family level. What is how much is left? 60%. That 60% of the life should be devoted to my individual evolution. So that complaint is gone. I don't have time to do the practice. We need only 20% of the mind and the intellect in a professional, family, social life. Your friend doesn't invite you for birthday every day. You see the occasion? Once in a year. Once in a year. You see that? You are 100% clear, this is the business, this is the profession I'm doing it, and this is the direction. These are my capabilities, these are my skill sets. You don't need too much. Why we don't need more than 20%? Everything in the world is available and especially on the Google. You want to know the marketing tools? It is available. <laughs> you see that? Why to worry? Why to worry? Why to think too much? So when we are clear, 40% of the mind should be engaged clearly with is what is right and good, what, how it is to be done, and then now understand what happens with these eight steps. The first step is that we have learned is study, contemplation, and reflection on the principle. Take one principle for a week, shreyas and prayers. What is right and good? What is what I like and pleasant? So you will find that the mind is pushing you always with to what you like and what is pleasant for you. So you have to introduce and replace what is right and good. Pick up only, say, Shreya's principle and the prayers. Constantly. 
your mind is thinking what I like and what is pleasant, what I do, what is right and good for me, make a decision, and your mind will see that it has got a freedom, the first step. The, sudden, the second step we have learned, incomplete knowledge leads to binding desire, leads to wrong action in my life. Incomplete knowledge. Why doesn't my boss understand? The boss has already given you an order. Follow it. But clarity of the mind, not reaction. So first you follow, you make your boss agree. At the second step, you have to see what second step should be taken to make him agree to you, but with the clarity not with the reaction. Second step, even in our life. So when we follow the incomplete knowledge, it leads to binding desire that prompts me to wrong action that causes the suffering. And you cannot take the world lightly. So what is uh, the secret of the second principle? Doing all the karma, all the action, doing all the action with the right knowledge, right attitude, playful, performing your role. How you can do it? Do you remember? I have to focus on the very karma, the action part. The mind should not drive me to ego to perform an action. The mind should not drive me to fruits of an action. The fruits of action is in the future. The action is in the present. What action, what result I will get after having this session, why to worry about this? Let me focus on it, what I'm doing now. Let me put my 100%. Second principle. Third, dedicate all the karma to the existence as if every karma is done for your evolution. I'm here, I'm speaking to you, I'll give you the practice. Can I do it with an attitude that let existence evolve me? Let existence express through my body, mind, intellect. Whether you are doing a business, you want to make a profit, do anything and everything that you have been doing with the right attitude. But what is the third principle? Dedicate all the karma. In the second principle, we are doing the karma free from the ego and the free from selfishness, seeking the fruits. So what will happen? I'm looking at Lara, how much money she has in her pocket during the session also. The mind will be just, mind is gone somewhere. That is why he said 40%. Third, dedicate or fourth. Fourth, we have done, we redefined and refined the karma for inner peace and happiness. You know, we understood different types of karma, voluntary karma, involuntary karma, prohibited karma, prescribed action. <coughs> Fifth, knowledge-oriented mind replaces overactive, lazy mind. So what was the topic? The sin. <coughs> Even if you are a highly rational being, you don't believe in the sin. You become irrational at times. Because of the inherent belief, dogma, religious sense. So what we how we define the sin? Any action done unconsciously with what I like and pleasant is a sin. And every karma brought at the conscious level is a virtue. <clears throat> is a virtue. I have to set my son who is a kid and I have to set my son rightly. So here, how to perform that karma? I play a role of a father. I make a big face. I shout. But internally, I'm not angry. I'm not reacting. Sometimes you need that. You use everything. Use everything. But that is what we did it. 
Now the sixth one. What is the sixth one? Recognize the inherent defects in the pleasure. That causes the lot of suffering. And I'll give you some of the tips. So you, if you listen to it again and again, you will get some clarity of the mind. We are doing it, what? 40%. We are reorganizing our life 40% through the mind. <clears throat> and 60% will be left. Mind is empty 60%. And there we can fill those principles, steps, and practices to evolve to reach to the highest state of our evolution. Are you understanding? So eight steps are to reorganize. You are doing the same thing, but you are reorganizing. So what is this today's step? We have to find the inherent defects of the pleasure and the pleasure-seeking mind. First thing to understand, the goal of life. You cannot achieve the success, you cannot reach to the highest state of mindfulness if you do not understand clearly that the goal of life is not seeking the pleasure, it is something else. Why? Simple. Goal of life is to find my true nature. The mind has to move inside. In pleasure, where the mind is moving, mind is always moving also. How can you reach your home moving in opposite direction? I'm going to workplace. But direction is towards your home. You will never be able to reach your home. So the mind is moving in opposite direction. Second, presence or absence of an object or a person falsely becomes the source of pleasure. I hate you. So your presence, I love you. Your presence, think of it. Are you thinking? I don't like you. So your presence drops all the pleasures of my life. <laughs> and I like you. I love you. Your presence gives me pleasure. Where is the problem? Problem is in the mind. Mind, how the hell you like and gives me the pleasure? How you dislike gives me the pain. Don't you want to change? Why should I depend on a person, an object in the world outside? Their presence and absence gives me pain and pleasure. Understand, this is the inherent defect of the pleasure. Are you getting it? No, I don't like pasta. I like only chicken. Chicken is not there. Presence and absence, see that in everything in life. Everything in life. Honey, I love you so much, but you have been absent. Is object or a person's source of pleasure? We need to think of it, contemplate and reflect and purify the mind. Is a person or an object is the source of pleasure? If the object is the source of pleasure, if the person is a source of pleasure, I am denying my real self. I'm rejecting myself. I'm always uncomfortable. Do you understand that? Are you getting it? Presence or absence is the object or a person is the source of pleasure in my life. Ask yourself. If it is the source of pleasure, I am denying my own existence. Are you getting it? No, I don't have money. How can I be happy? <coughs> so when you see those uh, uh, $10 or $20 paper, that makes your mind happy? Try this. Bring those bucks in front of your eyes, see them, 
check them, find out whether you get happiness or not. It fulfills our needs, basic necessities. We need to earn. But does it give me happiness? So I'm separating the very happiness from the object in a person. That is an inherent defect of seeking the pleasure. Are you getting it? It is the sixth principle. Our goal in the first eight principle is to organize our individual life, our personal life, our professional life, our family. <clears throat> she asked me to buy one utensil of the kitchen. So I had the little money. I said, I'll buy it. Sometime it is not there. I said, I will not do it. Why? I don't have. Now find out how we can manage with the resources at hand. <clears throat> and I can tell you, anyone can manage without getting into pain. That is 100% clear. Bill Gates may have 20 bedrooms in his mansion. How many bedrooms he uses for sleeping? So in India, we say we need six by four place to sleep. We have a different expression. You may be a millionaire, or we may be a beggar. We both need six by four. That will give you the idea of inherent defects <clears throat> of the pleasure. The pleasure-seeking mind lives in ignorance that causes the suffering. This is another in def defect, inherent defects of the pleasure. That if I eat this thing, it will give me pleasure. It has a beginning and it has an end. Think of it. Pasta, I love it. It has a beginning. Can you continue to eat pasta whenever you have a stress? It has an end. You overeat, you will have a problem. <laughs> See that anything. Find out, understand this. Put this principle into your mind. You will be happy here and now. It does not mean that you stop earning. I'm not saying. Do whatever you are doing. Do it better, better, better every day. But remember, every pleasure has a beginning and an end. So if you keep that in your mind, the next time the mind is running after an object to seek the same pleasure, you will notice the defect. The mind will say, how? Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> that is all. What will happen? The mind will move inside. It will discover that inner joy at the same time. Pleasure makes the mind crazy, obsessed, reactive, and always running, my friend. There is a subconscious knowledge present in my mind. How long that has been present? Since millions of years. Inheritance, genetic, process of evolution. We have the animal mind seeking the pleasure with four instincts. So we have the social instincts to derive pleasure. We have polish those animal instincts as a social instincts. One of my students in India said, you sir, you, you already know, if I do not go and attend the marriage ceremony of my friend, they will also not come to my son's marriage. And how old is his son? 10 years old. What are you talking about? Let them not come. 
If they don't come, I cannot <laughs> marry my son. Think of it. And that causes a lot of worries in your life. Don't you see that? Even in our relationship at home, pleasure demands sustenance and maintenance of that object of pleasure. Pleasure demands the object or a person should be sustained and maintained. So we ask our honey every time, do you love me? That love is now, it is not the same love which you used to love 10 years ago. I want to sustain and maintain <laughs> what is going to happen to your mind. Think of it. Are you getting it? Take any object. Take any person in life. Son, when you were young, you loved me so much. Now you love your fiancé. They should love their fiancé. Why you interfere in their life? Are you getting it? Think of those uh, thoughts. Think of those things. I'm a happy lord, you know. I got this uh, house. My son and daughter-in-law are over there in California. <laughs> I'm enjoying my life. Think of this. Pleasure is in reality an expression of a conditioned, habitual, unconscious mind. Pleasure is in reality is an expression of conditioned mind. I'm happy? Yes, let me share my happiness with you all. So conditioned mind is gone. Are you think, are you aware of this? Everyone wants to be with you if you are happy. No one wants to be with you if you always blame and complain and react. So blame, complain and reaction comes from the conditioned mind that is seeking pleasure. Ask yourself and see that. The moment you are upset, you will find out. Any moment of being upset with a person, with an object, with a member of the family, with an employee, with a friend, the mind is unconscious, you are upset. I asked you to be with me and I was so much lonely, you didn't come to me during coronavirus. Why? No, I'm just giving an example. So once you clearly understand that inherent defect in the pleasure while doing every work, continue doing every work, do every work, whatever you want to do. Continue to do every work. You will find out that this inherent pleasure in the mind drops by itself. And it will be replaced by the inner joy. The last point is very important. That is why I'm bringing this up. Remember this. Hesitation in the mind is awaiting the fulfillment of that desire in terms of pleasure. Mind is only hesitated because it is seeking pleasure from an object. So it blocks your mind. So what happens, how it blocks? Ah, it makes your mind crazy. You, your mind will say, you know, I have a lot of things to do. I'm confused. I'm not able to do those things in my life. What should I do? What should I do? How should I do it? So what is the basic fundamental of that? 
hesitation in the mind that is the most important thing our master teaches hesitation in the mind hides my inner peace and why the hesitation because i'm seeking pleasure from an object and a person do you understand this triangle are you understanding this triangle mind is seeking pleasure from an object or a person that causes the hesitation in the mind and that hesitation is blocking the inner happiness to be expressed outside are you getting it try this think of this and you will reveal oh my goodness let me drop seeking the pleasure for a while i will go there eat and eat pasta everything is fixed the table is fixed. I have the resources. I have the money. And you will see the peace and happiness. And the joy is already there. Now, it is a joy of eating. Are you understanding? Now, there is a joy of being with you. Not expecting a pleasure from you. Are you getting it? You have to listen to it again and again. I'm briefly summarizing all these principles. Joy of eating. Joy of being with you. Joy in relationship. Joy of doing a business. One aspect. And other aspect, the mind is hesitated expecting blaming complaining reacting for the sake of pleasure is the second attitude of the mind make a choice make a choice make a choice and if you make a choice you are ready for meditation let us start our journey. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Do you remember Shreyas and the prayers? Deep inside the mind. Shreyas, what is right and good? And what I like and pleasant. You have a discernment. You separate. Another principle. I'll introduce another principle so that you know how to Introduce these principles in your daily life. Another principle, self-fulfillment, desire fulfillment. Think of it, any desire that you fulfilled. And ask yourself, that desire is fulfilled? I earned $1,000, my desire. Now that desire is fulfilled? No. I want 5K. I want 10K. I want a million. Physical pleasure. Today it was good. Tomorrow it was. It will be better. Seeking, or the self fulfillment, you find your true nature. Eyes are closed in the stage when you are looking deep inside, into the space or blankness or emptiness, with eyes closed gently, and at the same time you find the body moves into steadiness naturally. Body moves into steady. That is the real practice of the asana in meditation. Patanjali says, sthir sukham asanam. Steadiness in the body, cheerfulness in the mind is the asana. So mind seeking pleasure? No, let me force the body to sit in this particular posture to seek what? Pleasure in meditation. You have destroyed the meditation. Until this knowledge is installed in your mind, that meditation is going beyond and behind the sense perception and the mental perception what will happen 
the mind is looking deep inside, even if has yet to transcend the mind. <clears throat> it will leave the body to itself, and the body has its own intelligence to be steady. That is the key. Many people say, you know, I've been doing the practice of asanas, why to go into meditation for how long? 20 years. Incomplete knowledge. Second step of is we settle into that state of cheerfulness of the mind and the steadiness of the body by being comfortable. So moving the mind, <clears throat> moving the mind on the neck joint. You don't move the body to the mind. You move the mind to the neck joint. Be there. Feel presence. That will give you an experience of sensation, being comfortable, and steadiness. So it is the mind that is getting purified, settling by experiencing sensation, being comfortable and steadiness in the body. Be very clear. If you have a clarity, <clears throat> what will happen? Where is the clarity? In the intellect. So what the intellect will do? Intellect will take over the mind. It will stop the mind. Don't wonder. Here it is. Just see, check yourself. Move the mind on the shoulder joints. Be there, feel. Sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Hip joint. Sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Suddenly what happens because of the past impression when I say hip joint and mind says, oh, move, why don't you move? Oh my goodness. The entire body. Move the mind and the entire body from the crown to the toes, looking at all the joints. Sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. In the stage one, <clears throat> the third step is addresses the mind itself, being carefree. Mind says, you know, see that. You have a lot of things to do. Why don't you start thinking at the time of meditation? So it is the thought. Thought is an image. Image has a desire and desire for seeking pleasure. Oh, this entire chain by a single thought. Okay, let any thought come, let any thought go, let any thought stay, let any thought remain. I am different from these thoughts. So why I named it being carefree? Go deeper. Clarity should be there. The mind cares all the time, unnecessarily. Who cares? The mind. And I'm asking the mind, you need not to care. I'll take care of myself. You start working on the mind. That is being carefree, my friend. How simple it is. Simpler the meditation practice, higher it is. Always keep that in mind. And now the fourth step, being casual. So being comfortable, physical. Being carefree, mental. Being casual, Natural. What is natural in Eastern wisdom is all pervading. It is one common element. It is the existence. 
Well, I'm not doing nothing. Sometimes you're sitting in a living room. What you're doing? No, I'm sitting casually, doing nothing. When the mind is not driving you through its thoughts, feelings, sensations, including the blame, complaint, you can see, you can feel that existence. That is the first stage is over. The second stage, we always continue. It is better to continue that step, purifying the mind. So looking inside the rib case in the space and start breathing short, quick breath, but the mind should remain cheerful. <laughs> Short and quick breath through both the nostrils. Expansion and contraction of the rib case continues. And you keep looking deep inside the rib case in the space or blankness or emptiness. Whatever you see is good, acceptable. Continue. We do two steps in purification of the mind to gain some focus, to move the mind deeper within. So continue. Continue, quick, short breath from the nostrils. You're not doing, you're not in a gym. Remember, the gym focuses more on the body, but your natural focus is deep inside the rib case in a state of cheerfulness. You are doing the breath. Goal, purification of the mind. We want to drop everything from the mind before we start working on the mind. Second stage, the first step. For the sake of clarity, we are understanding this. And stop this breathing, reverse. Take a deep, silent, slow inhalation. No noise of the breath. It should take time. When it should take time means what? The mind is fully aware on the breath. It is not wandering anywhere. So deep silence, slow inhalation. Lips remain together. Focus is deep inside the forehead and start doing the humming sound louder, deeper, longer when you exhale. Goal, make your breath deeper the next breath and the next humming is deeper and the longer than the previous one and you will see the result by yourself so we are doing the practice consciously continue second stage second step Continue, my friend.
Eins, two of this. Step now, we'll move into the stage three. <clears throat> what happens when you do the two practices in the stage two? The indication of doing it correctly is a deeper sensation, relaxation, and stillness. So move the mind from the top crown of the head to the toes slowly. On the head and the neck, right in the left arm. The middle portion right in the left leg, in the entire body. You will experience the change. It is sensation, relaxation, and stillness. We'll go for this step deeply in the following session, in the stage three. So we'll continue with the vanyas. Deep silence, slow breathing. As the, you inhale, you move the mind inside the right arm, either from the shoulder or to the fingertips. When you exhale, the mind goes with the breath. The mind becomes aware of the inner space. What is that inner space? Is the highway you will find out the highway is totally empty. No traffic jam. What it indicates, your mind is living with it. I did not talk about that. You know consciously the mind is living within. And the moment the mind is living within, it will instantly lead to variety of experiences. And that is how we know our progress. We learn from our experiences consciously. And the more we learn from our experiences consciously, we will realize the inherent defects in the pleasure. So what will happen when you realize? Blame, complain, reaction will be totally out of your life. You will get a feel. Oh, this is the living. Move the mind inside the left arm now. The breath is deep, silent, slow. It is the driver. The mind, no, mind is the driver. The breath is the car. And the highway is the space within. Now you see clearly the highway. There, are, there is no traffic. From where the traffic comes? From our crazy, obsessed, busy mind. But why? Seeking pleasure. But now I realize the inherent defect. Very good. So, inherent defect. And I'm moving the mind inside the right leg now. You see the entire journey, the highway is clear. It indicates the mind is living within. And when the mind is living within, how it can have blame, complain, reaction, anxiety, duality, conflict, That state of the mind takes the world lightly. 
lightly does not mean they're making fun of everything. Lightly means that now the mind knows what needs to be done, gains the focus, that's it. Minus blame, complain. Reaction, hesitation. It takes time. It's not a one-day affair. When you follow all the practices, eight steps, with regular practice, you will realize. Some people may realize faster, others takes time, normal. Moving the mind inside the left leg. Moving the mind inside the left leg. Now moving the mind in the spine from the crown of the head to the tailbone during inhalation and during exhalation the mind moves from the tailbone to the crown. You can do also the reverse, it doesn't matter. Goal is, objective is clear, mind is living within, objective is clear, the mind is moving inside the spine from the top of the head to the tailbone, from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Simple. Today we kept the goal of this step to check and understand and experience that the mind is living within. Highway is clear, mind is living within. One. Second pointer, it will lead you to very deeper variety of experiences of vision, of colors, of pulsation, of expansion. That we will take up much later. Otherwise, we'll start paying too much attention on these experiences we will miss. And now let us leave that third stage. In the fourth stage, we will make little variation. No breath. Breath is normal. Body is in the state of sensation, relaxation, stillness. Move the mind naturally deep inside the heart as you move the mind. Mentally, you say and Om, then give us space, recognize the space, then Shanti, recognize the space. And then again you see Om, as if the mind is returning from the heart, the space, and then Shanti. There is always a space. When I say Om Shanti, it's a two-word mantra but we don't recognize it. One aspect. Second aspect, Om Shanti, Om, pure consciousness, symbolically Shanti, manifestation as permanent state of the peace. What is the nature of the peace? Shape of the peace, size of the peace. It is the space. I've explained to you before. Sukha, the Sanskrit word su means good, kha means space. That is Shanti. My master used to say, mind is 100% available to you. You're already in peace. 
Om. First you recognize the space, then you say, here is Om. Then space again, Shanti. Space again, Shanti. Om. Space again, Shanti. Either you continue to move the mind deeper inside the heart in the space, as if space, Om Shanti, Om space, Shanti, one milestone. The mind continues to move deeper. Second, space, Om space, Shanti, second milestone. The mind is dropping deep, 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 deep inside. Fourth stage. When the mind is living within, it is easy to move the mind deeper within. I appreciate your commitment to this journey. And I'll leave everything. The last step, the fifth stage is the same. You know the breath is going in and out. That is the first point of awareness. Second point of awareness is Feeling the sensation of the breath as it goes in and comes out. And the third is no change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Do I need to create my true nature? No, it is already there within me. What I need to do to create my true nature. No, that's not. The mind always in a habit. The subtle ego works. So that's why we say do nothing. No change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Feeling the sensation and aware of the breath going in and out is all we are doing. You are aware of the three-pointed awareness of the breath. That awareness is also the state of doing nothing. Even though I have decided, I have created another stage that is state of doing nothing that we will understand deeply. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh. 
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Slowly bring your mind on the right hand and you will see the change before and after that is how we return in a specific way to maintain and sustain that awareness move the mind on the left hand now lift your both the palms place it on your closed eyes open the eyes inside in that darkness in front of your palms and then ask your mind, what happened? Why to share what experiences bring? The hands down. How are you, Lara? A lot of change is happening. I could see that on your face. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, my mind was all over the place at one point. And it was interesting what I was like attached to or thinking about. Um, the Om Shanti was really, really helpful. So when you had us drop it, I dropped it for a second, then I was like, I went back to it because it was calming for me just to stay with that because otherwise my mind was kept going. Okay. So um, yeah, so that was helpful for me, that piece. Yeah, to just briefly tell you, there are two layers of the mind. The first layer is all about these crazy thoughts, current working, and our attitude towards the work. That prevents the mind. The second is the impressions that we have already accumulated over years. That conditioning, that habitual mind, so even sometimes we don't have a thought, we wait by doing the regular practice and we realize that the past impression pops up in the mind. Yeah, it was interesting because it was about some, actually, this girl that I don't even really know, but I worked with her for about two years ago and she just popped in. I was like, I don't know what that's about, but I just sent her energy, sent her love and said, thank you. <laughs> You got it, yeah. Okay. Explain it. How are you, Stephen? <laughs> um, it was, um, you know, in my, my last um, several weeks of meditation have been very focused and um, very quiet. Today, the last couple of days for me, my mind's been a little noisier than, than usual. Um, and today's meditation was no different than what I am in my awakened stage. Um, but I worked really hard on telling it to shut up and not, I acknowledged the thoughts and the moments that were going on, but said, okay, it's enough. You need to go. And what I did feel is that as I kept settling in that it was almost, I felt like a nudge and like there was an energy that was hitting me saying, Hey, listen to me. And I was like, I'm not listening to you now. Just mm -hmm. leave me alone. So, um, that that was my whole meditation and i really felt when you got when you started chanting is when i actually settled into the whole meditation and felt the best that i did and it, it's great yeah, so yeah. stephen understand you are the best it is your mind to know these thoughts that are popping up in the mind and apply the principle there is an inherent defect in the pleasure. Every thought that comes, directly or indirectly, it is seeking pleasure. So when that clarity is there, the mind will stop naturally. Mind will. Let me express, in the, this session is my expression of the same joy, peace, and happiness. Now, if the mind is naturally focused, is there any reason in the mind to have any thought popped up? No. 
So that is the conditioned mind we talked about. <laughs> so even you succeeded because you were constantly recognizing it. So that recognition you means you are creating an impression in the mind, a good impression. And later it is going to replace. It's a journey. <laughs> How are you, Sergey? Today, actually, I just shut it down. Like in two minutes, I'm just shut it down. And at the very end, I'm okay, it's raining. Actually, I have a window just next to me, and I feel that rain. And I hear like Om Shanti and say, okay, probably it's like long, long time just. So I just hear your voice somewhere like, Deep, ah. deep, like inside of my mind, and that's all. That's all, like what I thought. Wonderful. I want <laughs> to tell you one more thing. The teacher is one. The instructions are the same. Experiences are different. Why? Why? Because of my five subjective states of the mind and the five objective states. So there are 10 objective states, 10 states of the mind. So if the mind is listening with the one pointed and clarity, it will help you succeed. If the mind is crazy at that moment and listening, it will not help you succeed. So who is responsible for success in meditation? Only you. Lay me off as a teacher. I'm not at all responsible. <laughs> See that? The more you understand these states of the mind, it will go a long way to succeed. Now, Jerry and David, how are you? Hi. Um... Uh, it was good. There was a lot uh, going on today. We lost internet connection and some different things. But during the Niyasa, it, uh, as I was driving through the body and there were no obstacles and, and not, not a clear path, That's good. it was very clear to me that the only obstacles that we have as in our day-to-day -day life are the ones that we put there. Yes. So if so that was like something that um, I just thought about that as we deal with our as, as we live our day and things come up and we if we can keep that clear knowing that right thinking then there aren't any obstacles. That is Shreyas. Right. That is what we have been talking Shreyas. What I what Jerry will feel if I say this. No, no, Jerry will, mind say Jerry will feel bad. No, no, Jerry will be happy. Now, these three thoughts are there. Put these three, three thoughts to test what is right and good. And say it. Express it. Finish. The life is easy. There. <laughs> How are you, David? <laughs> um, it was it was a little bit of a challenge. We lost internet twice, so we had to come back on on our phone. But um, yeah, for me too, it was actually during that the breathing through the, the empty body, and it was a I really noticed the progress that I've made doing that journey through my body, and and like Jerry, not seeing obstacles. Um, but unfortunately, that's great when the interrupt uh, interruptions occurred, um, so I only got half of it, but. I was very quickly able to get back into a meditative state when we got back online again, too. So, uh, progress, um, progress, yeah, in spite of. <laughs> you see how important it is for a couple to do the practice together. So you both share your experiences and you realize you filter out what is not desired, what is desired. It comes intuitively to you. 
it's a wonderful day, Avin. I'm so happy that things have started really happening. And that is all for today. I'm going to send you the file within a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh,